Well, welcome. And it is so good to see you on this summery day. We go from winter last week where we had to make sure the heater was on to summer this week where we have to make sure the AC is, is available to, to kick off. So, um, this is Kansas and this is May. The Summer Cafe is coming along nicely. We've got 120 cans of vegetables and the 150 you guys are doing great. And we've, I think we've reached all of our, our goal on the uh, on macaroni and cheese. I'll have to recount, but it looked like we're really close. A um, little clarification on Summer Cafe. This is a county-wide effort. So we are providing the vegetables, macaroni, and cheese, our charge. Um, the Tuscan and Core. And other places are providing the meat for the whole county. Um, the other, there's other places that are providing like the taco shells and napkins and other items. The Methodist Church in Minneapolis provides a freezer space and facility. So um, it's a joint effort. And what it is, is a program to make sure that the kids don't go hungry over the summer that are counting on their um, this, getting used to the school lunches and getting making sure they get something there. And some of the families, um, they don't, it's maybe a single parent that works early and, uh, and then comes home late. And so the kids have to, I mean, she may prepare a for lunch, but they don't have anything really handy, he or she. So this is to, to cover and make sure that there's no kids in our community with the rising cost of groceries, and no kids in our community go hungry if, if at all we can help. So uh, Delphus, Tuscott, Ada, I'm not sure if Wells has anything now or not, Minneapolis, and I think Bennington help all participate in this. So we're, we're covering the vegetables for all those communities and someone else is covering the other things. And it's quite a deal. I mean, you go in there and, and it's, it's they, they come out, I, I come out and pick up the boxes and we put them in the back of my pickup and I, the coolers cover the areas and it's just about all you can carry. And uh, it all gets used up. And um, I've got the star of the show that's come that say, like, what about me back there? <laughs> Uh, that's my granddaughter Stella and my daughter Shauna, some of you already know. She was at the, if you came to the baby shower last year, this is, you can see the fruit of the labor is, uh, <laughs> I guess that's literal, isn't it? <laughs> so, Shauna, I know Stella would like this. Shauna, do you mind coming up and... To, to yeah, to okay. find so that sure. so that for the so she can smile for the camera. Okay. <laughs> I know. Sure, I know. This, mind. Mind. this is a big deal for her because she loves to be the star of the show. Her name is Stella, which stands for star, and she is she is all that. Isn't she? Hey there, baby. Can I hold you just for a second. Oh yeah. So anyway, she's gonna come. Can you wait for her? Can you do this? So, 
So it's close enough that I think I can get that one. May the 3rd. May the 3rd here. And then we've got... 11th. May the 11th. I figure this is the time just before the, the field work you know, goes into full swing so everybody gets married in this little time period here. And then I have two birthdays. Two birthdays, all right. Debbie and Justin were born on the 5th. All right, if I see him, I'll try to, to embarrass him. Yeah, do that. <laughs> um, yes, so Debbie and Justin. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? Joe's birthday was the 25th of last month. We hit, we hit the jackpot on Mondays. <laughs> How many weeks do we not get anybody? Anybody else have a birthday? I think I heard a birthday over here. No? All right. Go ahead and wait, Stella. Now that we have to do it. All right, let's sing happy birthday. Happy anniversary. God, we do worship you and we thank you for your presence among us. We thank you that you care for us, that you love us, and that you're so good. I pray now that we would lay aside those distractions and worship you during this time. Worship together and learn from you and from each other. Guide us with your Holy Spirit as we read the scriptures and I pray that you would bless this gathering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our psalm is found in 31. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, we looked through it. Um, they 
I have just selected some verses, and sometimes that's good, but most of the time I like to read a little more of the context. And so we are, this is the training me to read through distractions, because she is looking at me and says the worst thing in the world, seeing if I really mean it, right? Lay aside our distractions, right? <laughs> She's testing me. In you, O oh Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever, do not me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and find your ear to me and rescue me speedily. There's our picture. Be a rock of refuge for me and a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the debt that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O oh God. O oh, oh Lord, a oh faithful God, you hate those who regard, who pay regard to worthless idols, but trust, but I trust in the Lord. I will exalt and rejoice in your steadfast love. Because you have seen my affliction, you have taken heed of my adversaries and my adversities. You have not delivered me into the hand of my enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O oh Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief. My soul and my body also, for my life is spent with sorrow. In my ears with sighing, my strength fails because of my misery. And my bones waste away. I was scorned of my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I become a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many and the terror all around. So he didn't have it easy either, did he? This is David's psalm. As they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. So you can see where he's, he's had some trials and felt like the world was crashing in on him. But he says this, that I trust in you, O Lord. I say to you, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and my persecutors. Let, me, let your face shine upon your servants. Save me with your steadfast love. Do not be, let me be put to shame, O Lord, for I call upon you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Amen. Well, our next hymn, is, praise him, is found in your faithfully seen uh, book. It's called I Love You, Lord.
right, let's sing uh, the next song. It's in our hymn book, All Things Bright and Beautiful, 147.
Thank you so much. It's like newborn babes that crave milk, and what she does like her milk. Um, she likes to play around with things too. Oh boy, this cord. I, I want to thank God that uh, Shauna and Stella made it safely and they stayed healthy and they got to experience the range of Kansas weather while they've been here. So far, we haven't had a storm, but that may be in the in the mix yet. So let's pray. Let's give thanks. I'd like to give thanks for that. I'd like you to join me. So for all the goodness of having family here, Lord, in your mercy, give us our prayers and praise and thanks. And for all of you who have family that you get to experience that time with, and it's precious, just like the song we sang, all things great and small, let's give thanks for that as it comes to mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our praise and thanks. We have other joys that we sing. She thinks Gail is just really tops. She is tops. Yes, and she's, she said, I like that peppy music and everything. And she likes what you're saying, too. Well, thank you. That is that is a real honor coming from her. So, give thanks that we have a, a, it's a win win situation. We're looking to do ministry and uh, get to minister with the greatest church that I think we've ever, uh, between these two churches, the greatest churches that we've gone to as far as feeling. Like we're a part of what God has called us to do, and feeling the joy of the, the family atmosphere. So let's give thanks. It's a two way street uh, for the joy of ministry and the joy of receiving ministry and being part of God's work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our praise and thanks. Do we have other joys or concerns?
for your presence among us, and we thank you for the joy that you give us in Jesus. Thank you that you, you love us so much, and I pray that we would enjoy and savor that love. Thank you for those in the community that you have healed. I pray for those in our congregation that need the healing touch, that you would heal them. For those that are in our community that have both spiritual and physical struggles that need your healing touch, we pray that you would heal them of those things. Thank you for those who are willing to be in leadership in our community and, and uh, those that are willing to lead us. I pray that you would guide them and that we would listen to what they have to say and follow uh, the laws that they and, uh, and rules that they come up with that we might be an obedient people and be ones that uh, are able to make our society, our local society, function. Thank you for those who are in state and federal leadership, those who are elected or appointed. I pray that you bless them and protect them, guide them. Thank you for their work. I pray that they would do as you have guided them, that they might lead us in a way that honors you. We pray also for our military and our border patrol, that you would bless those that protect our nation. We pray that you would bless them, bless their families, keep everybody safe and everybody healthy, uh, guide them, keep them connected. We pray also for um, those who protect us locally, for the uh, law enforcement, for fire departments, for EMTs, for those who take care of our utilities and make sure that the electricity stays on. We count on all of them and we thank you for those and others who um, we may not even know who they are but are protecting us. We pray that you would bless them for their work and keep them safe and healthy and protect our families. We pray for those who are serving as farmers and ranchers and those who deliver goods to us. We pray that you bless them and keep them safe, especially this time of the year when the highways are busy. Provide for their needs, and we pray for a good rain right now. We know that the wheat crop is suffering from this heat and drought. We pray that you would provide a good rain for us and for the crops that are, that are to come this summer. Thank you, Father, for um, those who are serving in schools. We pray that you would bless them. Help them, especially these last weeks of school, that they might be able to focus and not be distracted by the many things that are going on. Help them to be able to help the kids stay focused. We pray for the students. We pray that you bless them and guide them, especially now that they might um, be able to do what is right for them to help them to be successful and help them to find um, a career or a job that meets the needs of the community and, and for them as well. We pray for those who are in the hospitals. We pray that you would meet the staff needs that they might have that you would bless all the workers and nurses and doctors and administrators and everybody else who helps take care of the <coughs> those who are sick and injured. I pray that you would bless them for their work. Pray for those who are uh, the patients. We pray that you would bless them and keep them safe and heal them and bring comfort. We pray for those who are persecuted, for the church that is persecuted. We pray for the Christians there that you would bless them, protect them, provide for them, give them endurance and strength, give them joy in the midst of their suffering and pain. We pray for the uh, for those who are serving as missionaries. We pray that you bless them and provide for them, and even as they have family issues that they deal with, that you would help them to to deal with those those things. We pray for. Um, those who are incarcerated in our, our jails and our prisons, we pray that you bless them. Thank you that we can serve and minister to them while they are doing this time of thinking about what they have done and trying to improve. I pray that you would bless them if they have met you. I pray that you would help them to be able to, to be reconciled with you and their families and their communities. And thank you that you have taught us a prayer that is a framework for us to pray. And now we will pray it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, one of the pastors that we do used to have music during his prayer, and my granddaughter was the Bible for us. Although her instruments are kind of limited. Boy, oh, she's a quick one, isn't she? But this time we'll receive your offering. Yeah,
distracted, but that's all right. I work with you, remember? Yeah, that's right. That's right. This is an advantage, isn't it, when you uh, when you have a situation like that? So, lots of houses. What comes to mind when you think of houses? You think of the housing shortage we have? I rarely get people ask me if I'm if they know any place to rent and call. Because people are looking for houses, they're looking for affordable homes. It's just uh, difficult to find that these days. Rent is going up like everything else. Uh, wages are going up, but you know they take the taxes and everything out of those wages, and you know you don't have as much left as you think you might. So lots of houses. We need lots of houses, don't we? They're always trying to build, and then there's regulations, and then there's getting utilities to those places, and all the complications that go with houses. And there's different kinds of houses. Of course, you know the variety of houses they're trying to make. Ones that we were just talking about how you, uh, uh, yesterday, how you can make houses more energy efficient and how it saves on air conditioning and how it saves on heating. So maybe that's what you think of it as a house. But Jesus talks about a house, uh, the home, a dwelling place that's going to be for us forever. So he said there's not going to be a housing shortage there. But also we read about uh, in, in Israel, and I looked at the Old Testament to look at houses, and there's like thousands and thousands of references it seems to houses. Maybe it's not that many, but it looks like it. And some of them are figurative, like the house of Israel. And sometimes they would say, like, if there was a leader of the house, the house of, uh, of uh, Felix. It just means the people who are associated with his house. In the Old Testament, it talks about the house of God. Now, some people call the church the house of God. It's a little different because we didn't build this temple quite like they built the temple in the Old Testament. It doesn't have quite the same meaning because this uh, does not have a, a holy of holy place except in our hearts. And the, really, this becomes the house of God as the people of God meet here. If this was to be sold or um, if we left it empty, it wouldn't be really a church. It would be a church building. But to shorten it up, we, we, all the time. we say the, the church is this building, but really it's not the house of God like the temple was. Sometimes we can... We can put too much emphasis on this being the house rather than our eternal, rather than our eternal home that God has, has prepared for us. I, I found that kind of interesting because remember during Jesus' ministry, he did not have really a permanent residence. Remember where he said foxes have holes and I don't have a place to lay my head? That he was just kind of homeless. Now people would invite him into his, their homes, but he just wandered around. So maybe he was looking forward to that time when he was permanently in a home, in his father's house. So houses cover a lot of ideas. I didn't even cover all the topics that, that a house is. I mean, you can maybe think of some things when we say house. It's just odd how English language is like that, isn't it? Uh, when we say house, we have one thing and somebody else may have another. There's another meaning that I thought was more important for us today. And you remember when Janet was reading in, uh, in Second Peter about the house that God is building. It is not it is not a physical house like we like to imagine, but Jesus is the chief cornerstone. And a lot of people that you meet have trouble with God and with Jesus especially. And they won't accept Jesus and in fact they'll reject him. Certainly the Pharisees did, even though they had all of that knowledge 
They rejected the spiritual side when Jesus came. They didn't see that he was the Messiah. They didn't see that he was the Savior, that he was in the Father, and the Father was in him. They didn't see that he was the way and the truth, that no one could come to the Father except through him. But he took those who would follow him, those that he had chosen and had chosen him. It's a two-way street. We choose God, he chooses us, and we build, as it were, a house. He uses that word carefully. And I've brought, I've got plenty of scraps like this. Do you guys have scraps like this in your garage? Lots. If I could put those two before blocks together, I could probably build a house or something. The two before scraps that I've got around my garage. And I can't stand to throw them out because you have to buy something like this, this little piece of shingle, then it's pretty pricey. But I use these kinds of things all the time to, to build or to add to it. You'd think I'd be, my garage would be empty. And, uh, but I, if I find some scraps of wood that are big enough, I, 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 take, I think I took some from, from Sharon's house one time. They had some good wood, we're still using that. But not all things are needed. If all we had were these little shingles, it'd be great for the roof, but it wouldn't be a whole house, would it? We need those two befores to build a frame. We need the cement for the foundation. We need um, the drywall. We need the plumbing. We need the electricity. We were down seeing um, Kurt, uh, Gil's nephew down in um, Pretty Prairie, and they were, we were seeing what all the work that Kurt did you know, that he could do, and they were building an apartment for his father-in-law, and just, my goodness, all the things that had to be done to make that apartment. It was kind of a, a farmer's dream because it was built in a shed. It was a little apartment built in a shed where you could look out and see the cattle on, out of one window, one big sliding glass door, and out of the windows, and the, the other side was a garage. So a lot of men kind of dream about a place like that. But anyway, a lot of work went into it. But in the house of God that we have, that Jesus is building, we need everybody. We need you. We need you. We need me. We need Gail. We need Stella. We need Shauna. We need everybody in the house of God to do the work that he's called us to to make it complete. Because we can't just have a roof. We can't just have the cement. We need it all. So don't ever think that you're not necessary, that it's just the preacher or just the, the pianist or just the people, the trustees that do the work um, on the outside of the church or the inside. It is every one of us that's needed for the house of God to make it complete. And if any of us don't do our part, then the house of God, and especially in a community like this where we don't have a whole bunch of, of people, um, the house of God really shows its, its gaps. And shows its holes, as it were, in the roof. So let's make sure that we do all things that we can to be as Jesus instructed us to be, to be a body, a house, to be complete, to do our part, to be the church that God has called us to be. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our communion, so if you'll turn in your in books to 15. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to the grace. So here we are remembering this once again. But never does it get stale. The story of salvation of Jesus died on the cross for us. And for how we can uh, obey God and repent. 
repent and come to the cross and receive salvation forever. That God loved us so much that in our sin He took care of us and loved us enough that we may find a way of salvation. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we pray in your name and join in the ending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, both sand and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, both sand and the highest. We're so thankful that on the day that Jesus was to be betrayed, he cared enough to explain some things to us. He took, um, took the cup. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant. He remembered his death on the cross. He said, drink you, all of it. This is the new covenant. He broke the bread. He said, take and eat all. All of you eat this. Be just like the church, we're all to be partakers of the communion, all to be partakers of the church. He cares about us and he loves us. And he institutionalized this so that we might remember what he has done for us, that he loved us that much. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in pain, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. We're thankful that the Father loved us so much as Jesus so mentioned, that the Holy Spirit is present with us and makes, uh, makes it so that we can do marvelous things in God's kingdom, and that Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice on the cross for our sins. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we'll make sure our hearts are, are clean and pure before the Lord, and uh, make sure that we are ready to receive what God has for us, so I would invite you to talk to God, and if you have anything that you still need to get straight with Him, then you do that, and if you just want to praise Him, you can do that, but make sure that your heart is ready to receive this symbol and this means of grace that God has provided for us. As God has called, uh, please come and participate.
now we're going to sing our closing song, God Will Take Care of You. So let's stand. Verses 1 and 3. 1 through 3. Where's that? 130.